Welcome home, everyone. Uh, today we're going to be dealing with the Cure Sarge. I know a lot of people are always interested in what to do with this hybrid battleship. Um, because it has planes, when to fly them, where to position yourself, you know, and uh, kind of how to be the most effective you can be. Now, my build is more of a survivability build. Uh, we're trying to get... Obviously, a, uh, a gun feeder would be excellent because if, if uh, a DD, you know, come up comes up on you while you're flying, let's say, you can easily drop your planes, quickly switch to HE, and hopefully have a chance of surviving. Uh, we're going to go with concealment as well, which will put us down to 13-3 with, of course, your uh, equipment. I went with concealment here too. Uh, we went with a faster reload. These are 406s, right? We got them down to 36 seconds. Which is kind of funny because it'll give you enough time to fly your planes when you can. Now, what I would like to do is I personally play it more aggressive because it's still a battleship. Yeah, it's a big superstructure. It's hard to miss, but uh, you can get into some really good positions. And obviously, when possible, you can spot for yourself with your own planes and attack. The planes actually hit quite hard. Uh, if you can get a nice flat, flat broadside, but if you can't, they can still do some uh, chip damage. Uh, I went with your typical, you know, main armament one. I went with damage control one. Uh, I did uh, go with uh, our artillery uh, plotting room, just because it gives us uh, a little bit more range to the guns. But then it also helps us with uh, with uh, the secondaries, which. You'll, you'll see. It, it, it adds up at the end. Uh, this is, of course, my build. Uh, I'm kind of short on certain things, which is fine. You're always going to want India Delta. You're going to want uh, November Foxtrot. Let's just put that in, too, just in case. And maybe someone's going to want a Rama, so we'll do that one. Uh, but overall, obviously put in whatever skin you want. And uh, this is how I'm going to play it. Well, let's just do greens here. Just to make some credits. It is still a premium ship at tier 9. It, it actually does quite well. We actually have a good game. Which I'm hoping we do. Uh, we will then uh, make almost a million. Maybe a little bit more. A little bit less. And here we go. I have uh, quite a few replays of this ship on YouTube already. That, that are really good games in my eyes. So if you do want to check them out... Uh, I don't know exactly where I put them. They're in there somewhere. <laughs> Anywho, here we go. So we're still playing a battleship, even though it's a hybrid. We are going to be putting ourselves in positions to play a battleship. Most of the time when we're going to be flying, we're going to be flying when we're not engaging anything or when we're dark. So we, when we go undetected. So we're on north. Let's see which side we're on. There's going to be subs, one DD only. Oh, no, two DDs, which is fine. We're, we're going to want to go after them with our planes as soon as possible. Okay, and there's no CV, so we can actually hide quite well. Uh, what I like to do also is uh, hold down control and go on this little cog. And I like to turn these little things on. They kind of give you like a heads up on your minimap of what's going on. So you don't actually have to remember every time. And also make the minimap a little bit bigger with the plus and minus. See? This is the biggest it, it is. Uh, it gets. It usually starts this big, or be like this big, and you can't really see anything. Uh, the mini map is very important to uh, actually understand the game, position yourself correctly, and know know when to flank, when not to flank, when to push, when not to push, and when to transition over to help out another side. Now I'm preemptively turning my guns because I know that I'm going to be going this way and I'm going to be shooting that way, which is something a lot of players uh, don't do. They just start moving, but they start looking that way and start moving. Uh, not having their guns ready, right? So when you get engaged, you're not ready to engage. Preemptively turning your guns is ideal. Uh, and for me, I don't lock them with the buttons. What I do is I just free look. So if I want to look this way with my guns, then I just hold down right click and see how it says free look. Now I can look around while my guns are just locked that way. So I can look around. I can see what's happening. And then now I'm just focusing on the minimap. So... What I want to do is I want to get myself into a position kind of around here for now. right? From here I can come out this way if I need to, or I can push into the islands if I need to. But I want to be in a position where I can fire soon at the enemy. We're not top tier, we're mid tier. Uh, we have a few 
battleships to deal with, but nothing crazy. And a few cruisers to deal with, nothing crazy. Okay, we're going to slow down. And we're just going to wait now. Now, I have HE loaded, because uh, what we want to do is we... The DDs are going to be spotted potentially first from our DDs. Even though ours aren't in position to spot for us, per se. So we want to do as much chip damage as possible to that DD. I'm going to stop for a second here. And I'm going to go spot for us. Uh, the middle. So I'm not sitting far back. I'm not sniping. I'm just, I'm just going to wait for a second. So then we can kind of see where the red team is going to go. Right? Okay. Now, remember, when you're flying your planes, if you get floods or fires on your ship, uh, there's no damage con. It's not like the CVs where they automatically heal themselves or repair themselves. So, you gotta know that you're gonna be... They're gonna have dots on you the entire time. Alright, so... Let's pause hurt. We're actually gonna go for him, try to finish him off, because he is radar. You're gonna lose some planes, but... That's okay. And there. Let's see what we get. 7k with a fire. He might have, let's see, if we... So, see how the number up here is going up? That's the damage? That means he doesn't have damage control. That means he's burning. And that means he's probably going to die soon. If he doesn't have a heal or a repair, he's going home. So if no one shoots him now, most likely that one fire will kill him. And there you go. We're on the board. That one little plane attack. There you go. Someone killed him. 12,000 damage. 12,000 damage. Now, we're going to blast him with HE first. And because he's nose in, we're actually going to stay HE. But we're going to angle a little bit here. Because we, we need to angle. It's still a battleship shooting us. Now, I'm not afraid of these guys here. I'm more afraid of what's going to happen here. We'll see. So I'm keeping an eye on it. This guy decided to go dark, which is fine. Uh, I am going to switch to AP, because this Kerfurst is presenting us with a broadside here. And we're going to stop engaging the Iowa. Now, the Iowa did engage us. We're going to engage him again while we still have HE loaded. And then we're going to go dark. While we're going dark in the next 17 seconds, I'm expecting maybe one more person to fire at us. Most likely not HE, so I'm not going to get a fire on me. So what we're going to do now is we're going to either go after that Shima. Hmm. Or put another fire on the Kerfurst. We saw the Kerfurst was on fire earlier. He did damage control it or the fire ran out. So let's try to get another fire on him. I remember, uh, don't sleep on these planes. They actually do quite a lot of damage. And always try to go for targets that are broadside to you. So you can do maximum rocket damage. So even though he's turned a little bit there, I'll show you guys what happens. Down to 7,000 with fire. So he did just damage con it. So we got a fire on him, and he instantly hit his repairs. We're going to back up a little bit so we can get all our guns. I'm going to switch to HE again. So what we want to do at this point is we want to put a dot on him, which is fire chance, right? We want, we want the fire to burn as long as possible. Knowing that he doesn't have damage control. There you go. He's going to show up. Now, we're not going to move up anymore. Uh, this guy's up. I'm going to be engaging these two. I don't benefit from moving closer. He has secondaries, most likely. A secondary build. So he's just going to pummel me with secondaries. So what I want to do is... Uh, I'm going to stay mid like this. I'm not going to go any further back. I'm going to stay mid. I'm going to wait for him to pop up here. So we can get a fire on him. I'm going to get all my guns. I am dark, so I can easily go a little bit more broadside. But once I fire, I'm going to be switching back to a more nose-in position. Let's see, we're going to spot this guy. Watch us fire at the Iowa, and this guy pops up instantly. How many times does that happen to everyone? Okay, we're moving up just, just, just a little bit. Okay, we're not going to wait anymore. We're going to do this and force him to fire at us, and then on the reload, we'll get him again. Okay, there's a fire. Now, we could wait for him to put it out, like he just did. So by the time now I fly to him, the cooldown is 
the, the, the cooldown on the repair is gone, and we can cause another fire, which would be permanent. And as he, as he's pushing in, he's going to spot me in just a second, so he's going to have another... He's going to shoot me again before I come off of my planes, which is fine. He's already quarter health dead, so we have an advantage here. Not only with the planes, but we're also we're just going to spam him with HE, just front guns. Now he did stop, which is too bad for him. There we go. And... Fires? Fires. We're going to get some more fires on him. These are permanent fires now, so it's full duration until he has his repair back. And depending on what kind of build he has... And there's another fire. So that's two fires. Full duration. He's already at half health. There. He, he, he hit us for 9k because we're really wide. We need to nose in a little bit. So I'm going to actually go forward. I'm going to go forward and use the island to defend myself against those guys. I'm going to try to just 1v1 him. Kerfus is trying to chip in here. There we go. Kerfus just hit me for full alpha. No citadel. I'm going to hit a repair. And I highly recommend everyone get at least this mod here. Where my mouse is. It tells you your full heal, and the closer this number at the top gets to this number, that's when you heal yourself, so you can get the maximum amount of heal out of it. So, okay, so we're going to nose in a little bit more. There we go, a lot less damage, 1,300. That's excellent. Now, he's still burning, so I'm actually going to go for him. What we want to do here is we want to spread the dots. Uh, Kremlin's coming this way, too, so we got to be a little bit careful here, because... Uh, Fighting multiple battleships is not ideal for any battleship, but it's not impossible for us. Okay, we stopped in time. Perfect. I was kind of waiting for that to happen. Okay, he has no more fires on, so we're back to the Iowa. Now what's going to happen is now I'm going to put myself a little bit forward. So I can avoid these soon. I'm going to go after the ground. The ship is on fire. Okay, and I'm going to put this fire out. Slow down. And let's get rid of this Iowa right now. Doesn't matter which direction we come in. Oh, he's trying to go for a heal. Our team has taken the lead. We got a fire on him. He's dead. Four thousand, no fire. Okay, that's not the end of the world. Their team's almost dead. So what we want to do now is be a little bit more aggressive because now we need to use our armor and our health pool to make sure that they don't get a, bu a bunch of kills on us because they can easily bring this back. The game's not over yet. Now this IO, I'm gonna ping to the rest of my team because I'm not gonna have, I'm not gonna be able to attack him anymore. We're gonna put our secondaries on him, and if we have to, we're ramming this guy. Uh, we do have more ships than them. So a ram right now would be ideal. When you have less ships than the enemy team, you don't want a ram. Right? So this is where you sacrifice for the team. Right? This is a dangerous target. He knows I'm coming in for the ram. If, I mean, if I was him, I'd ram too. Because he knows the game's over. And him killing me for 48,000 health. Uh, that's full XP right there. That's all the XP you want. Now, is he going to commit to it? He's not going to commit to it. He thinks I'm going to drive by, but I'm not going to drive by. I'm going to honk the horn, telling him that I'm coming in. Yeah, I'm not avoiding you, bud. It's over. And uh, there you go. Cure Sarge. We had a ram flag. Didn't matter. We got the kill. And then the rest of the team just has to mop up now. And it's over. So, I utilized my guns. I angled. I used my planes. I harassed. We took a million potential damage away from our team. Right? We still got 145,000. So we didn't just sit back and farm with our guns at max range. We actually used our health pool. Uh, we were engaging two battleships, which is ideal because that means they weren't shooting our cruisers or destroyers. And, uh... We were also spotting. Uh, those planes do spot. I don't know who was using that information, but where I was uh, and how the battle turned out, it worked out for us. The game's over. This Mogami in the back has no chance. 
And uh, a nice GG for our team. There you go, GG. And there you go. There's your Cure Surge, guys. Nothing crazy. Play it like a battleship when you can fly. Uh, most of the time, shoot the target, uh, like attack the, the target you're shooting with your planes. Uh, because it's a huge deterrent for that guy to just sit there and eat planes uh, and fires while you're also shooting him. It's really unfair for a 1v1 situation. You have a massive advantage. It's just putting yourself in a position where you can still tank while flying your planes. Uh, if I was at a 3v1, 4v1, even the 2v1 position that I was in, uh, the crew first wasn't really committed to shooting me. He shot me, what, twice? The rest of the time, he left me alone. If he actually helped out the Iowa, I wouldn't have really had a chance. They just needed to push me. I would have been dead. Or I would have just had to leave. Uh, but in other situations where there's a cruiser or a destroyer, you have to be careful flying your planes because uh, your ship's vulnerable. You have zero control. I mean, you can go to M, right, and set a waypoint. But... That's presenting broadsides that's, you know, unaware of certain dangers from around the map because you're flying your planes. So don't just be that guy that's flying his planes. Actually be the battleship. Bonus if you're flying your planes when you can. And let's see the end result. How do we ado? There you go. There's your million. That's on a blue bonus code. Blue. Right? A million. Not bad. One plane shot down. There wasn't any planes. Secondaries even went off. We had 25 rockets. Great. Perfect. Seven fires. Shoot HE when you can. We got fourth place. So even though it didn't maybe seem like we did a lot, we held the middle, we held the, the, the cap, and we defended it against two battleships, among other things. If you go into details, that Kremlin, because of the RAM, 49,000, but there's the Iowa. Iowa was uh, in a lot of trouble because of us. There you go. The rocket planes hit him for 15,000. 25,000 in fires, mostly from the rockets, right? Kerr first. We engaged him a few times. That's still 24,000 there. And then the Moskva with the planes. One time we strike them. One time. 12,000 damage. The planes hit him for seven and another almost 5,000 in fires. So there's your Kerr first. Kerr first. There's your Cure Sarge. Oh, a lot of K ships. Uh, there's your Cure Sarge, everyone. So enjoy it. It's not that bad of a ship. Uh, you still have 12 guns, right? And they're they're American 406s. So, uh, fantastic little hybrid. You can you can put yourself in some interesting positions, and then counter them really easily with the planes if you know what to do. So, good luck out there, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye.